Welcome to Carmen's Australian Storytime. Today I'm reading with my beautiful niece Ava, who we haven't seen for four years. And guess what? She's my guest reader today. And we are going to go have a go at Grandpa's Teeth. And it's written and illustrated by Rod Clement. And guess what, everyone? No blurb today. But if you have a look, he doesn't keep his teeth in his mouth. When you get much, much older, your teeth go in the jar beside your bed because they're fake teeth that he wears. So at night, they stay in the water next to his bed. So let's see what the problem is with his teeth. Right. Help! I've been robbed! We heard, a, we heard Grandad shouting. It's a disaster. Come quickly. He was shout he was still shouting as with Mum, Agnes, and I ran up the stairs. Oh, look, he's shouting. It's a this is how did you say that? This is disaster. Why is he talking funny? Grandad's room was a mess, but to be honest, it was always a mess. He Blamed, blamed his Gump, his old dog. But Gump looked too old to make much of a mess to me. What was taken? gasped Mum. Your video? Your television? Not your gold-plated golfing trophy? No, said Grandad. It's much more serious, sis. It's my teeth. They've been stolen. <laughs> They've been stolen. Oh, no, it's the teeth. I don't know. I don't know. Why would someone steal teeth, Ava? Crazy. Grandad normally kept his teeth in a glass of water by the bed. The glass was still there, but the teeth were missing. You haven't swallowed them by accident, have you? Asked Mum. Of course not, replied Grandad. Those teeth were special. Handmade by the finest Swiss craftsmen. You're doing this very well. I guess I looked at Mum and whispered, Why is Grandad talking funny? You see how serious it is? Moaned Grandad. I may never speak the same again. <laughs> Are you sure you looked everywhere? Asked Mum, under the bed, behind the cupboard, in old drawers? Yes, replied Grandad, with tears in his eyes. I've looked everywhere. Mum called the police. Oh, wow. Would you call the police for Grandad's missing teeth? I don't know about that. Yes, can you see the picture? They're looking everywhere, in the cupboards, under the beds. Inspector Ray looked grave. We've made a through, thorough search of the room and house, but we found nothing at all. No teeth, no clues. Everyone was home at the time of the theft. So how the theft got in and out without being seen is a mystery. Can you give us a description of the stolen articles, Mr. Petter whistled? Grandad frowned, rubbed his chin, then looked at the inspector. Can you smile, please? He asked. Smiles? Yeah. Shh. Yes. And Nick. Nice. Nice. Big smile. Inspector Rate grinned sheepishly. No, shouted Grandad angrily. I mean, really smile. The inspector raged, rage smiled broadly. Hmm. Grandad leant forward, tapped the inspector's teeth with his finger, and growled suspiciously. They look just like both. The inspector looked shocked. Er, I've had these for years. Oh, no, he thinks the inspector's stolen his teeth. I don't think so. I think the inspector's got better things to do with his time than go around stealing old people's teeth. <laughs> the inspector took us all down to the station for further investigation. Using Grandad's description, the police artist drew a picture of the missing teeth. <laughs> they put up our wanted poster with the others. We made copies and put them all over town. Oh, wow. Have you ever, ever been walking down the street and seen pictures of missing teeth? I don't think so. How ridiculous. <laughs> 
Inspector Rate rounded up the usual suspects and took them in for a questioning. All of them were asked <laughs> to smile. Most of them had missing teeth as well, but just one or two. Not the whole set. <laughs> they even brought in Granddad's unfriendly neighbor, Mr. Carbuncle, because her own teeth didn't fit, but Granddad didn't recognize her or the teeth in the police lineup. I've never seen this smile before, he explained to the inspector. <laughs> so he's been her neighbor, but she's always unfriendly, so he's never seen her smile, so he didn't recognize her. And look at all of these other usual suspects. They're all missing their teeth. What a funny lineup that would be. <laughs> After several days, the inspector had to admit that no teeth had been found, no thief had been caught, and no clues undercovered. Granddad suspected everyone, especially anyone who didn't smile. Soon, the whole town was smiling at him, although he never smiled back. He had nothing to smile with. <laughs> Mum even got cold feet. A call from one of those TV shows, Unsolved Crimes. They came to the house in a helicopter. We had to reenact the whole thing. When Granddad was interviewed, he asked the presenter, Pearl White, if he could borrow some of the teeth. After all, he mumbled, you have more than enough. Have a look at Pearl White. Pearly White. <laughs> she has a lot of teeth in that mouth. And look at those neighbours. He's not very happy about this situation. And have you noticed that Gump's always by his side? That's his dog. Yeah, interesting. Keep that in mind, right, Ava? Yeah. Dad rang Switzerland to find out how much a new set of teeth would cost. He was so shocked when he found out. He dropped the phone. The only way we could ever afford it, it he joked to mom, is to sell the house. What? Granddad thought this was a great idea. Who needs the house anyway? <laughs> uh, you do to sleep in, right? Yeah. It doesn't help you chew your food. To cheer him up, we all took Granddad to the fun park. It was a disaster. He took at one look at the front entrance and burst into tears. <laughs> oh, dear. Look, what's at the front entrance, Ava? <laughs> Teeth! Oh, yeah, not a good idea. And that is a famous place in Sydney called Luna Park. Everyone watched unsolved crimes, but no one rang the inspectors, and the crime remained unsolved. Some spare teeth were left in their letterbox, but none of them fitted properly. <laughs> People began locking their doors at night, imagining a teeth theft when loose on the streets. No one knew who would be next. Fear gripped the town. The thief had to be caught, and soon. Mm. Um, look at some of those teeth, Ava. <laughs> I'm not sure shark's teeth are very helpful at this point. <laughs> nice of people to be considerate and send their teeth mm -hmm. in for him, but yeah. Some of those teeth, what about the wind-up teeth? No, I don't think I want those in my mouth chattering yeah. away. <laughs> it seemed that the only way to prove beyond responsible doubt... Re reasonable? Reasonable doubt that the teeth in your head were your own was to smile broadly at every person you met. Anyone who didn't smile was immediately dragged off to the police station for more questions and a chat with the inspector Ray. So everyone began smiling at everyone else all the time, everywhere, even at funerals. <laughs> oh no, imagine going to a funeral and everybody's smiling. Yeah. Oh, and I don't know that that's what you're supposed to do at funerals when you're, you know, respecting the people who have passed away. Mm, even the fish in the background is smiling. <laughs> and the birds are and smiling. And the birds, everybody's smiling, even the animals. Because of Grandad's teeth, the whole town was beginning to suffer. Tourists, seeing the endless sea of smiling faces, were too scared to get out of their cars. <laughs> After a while, they stopped coming all together. Dad's cafe, like the rest of the town, was losing business. 
The mayor called an emergency meeting. Oh boy, this is getting pretty serious when you've got people visiting town and they think you're all creepy weirdos because everybody's smiling. Oh boy. <laughs> The night for the first time that anyone could remember, the church hall was full. Speaker after speaker stood up to complain about the loss of customers and constant strain of smiling all day, every day. Paster Butter pa pasta, yeah, he's the town Butter, preacher. summed up this situation. While I've while I've always consider, considered this smile this hap a happy town there are limits. No one wants to smile without a reason. And there are many reasons to smile in this town at the moment. It's time, I believe, to put a stop to it. The crowd cheered. Mr. Bert Whistle had one of the finest sets of teeth in the country, and he alone couldn't afford to replace them. In fact, <laughs> I alone could not afford to replace them. But if every one of us put one dollar in the collection plate tonight, we would have enough m enough money to buy two new sets of teeth. Most people put in a dollar, others put in two. Oh boy. This is a good way to solve the problem, but I think this is a crazy problem. A crazy, crazy town this is. Very nice that people are generous and kind. At the presentation ceremony. Grandad opened the parcel and received, revealed two sets of brand new teeth. <laughs> Got the camera crew there. <laughs> Why are they different sizes? Asked the mayor. Oh, only one of them is for me, replied Grandad, popping one of the sets into his mouth. The other one is for Mrs. Crun Carbuncle. Carbuncle. Her teeth never fit her properly, and she and she has such a pretty smile. Ah, that's a kind thing to do. You got a set for Mrs. Carbuncle so she can smile properly and smile maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Yes, I love. There's a camera crew there for teeth. Also, the this looks like teeth. <laughs> oh yeah, it does look a bit like teeth. Yeah. yeah. Granddad was very happy with his new teeth. So was Mr. Mrs. Carbuncle. They smiled all the time. In fact, they were so happy that Grandad's old dog, Gump, smiled too. Hmm, now I've been watching Gump through this whole book. And have you seen him smile yet? No. No, I haven't seen him smile yet either. So let's see. Hmm. For the first time ever. Oh boy, this is the funniest page in the book. <laughs> Can you see what's happened this whole time? Who stole the teeth? Who stole them, Ava? Gump. Gump the dog, he had them the whole time. The whole time. And if you go back through the pages, he's there all the time while they're doing all the investigating. Everybody's there. <laughs> oh boy, great story. Get this one on your bookshelf. Thank you for joining us on Carmen's Australian Storytime and we will see you again soon. Maybe I'll get Ava to do another read because she seems to be quite good at it. Good job. All right, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.